Hi, this is Dr. Doug Lucas, the Chief Science Officer of PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition. This is an introduction to the video you are about to watch, which is a summary of my most recent blog post, which is available in our client area at myphdweightloss.com. The topic of the blog is alcohol and how it relates to weight loss and weight maintenance. And what we talk about in this video and in the blog is the PhD approach can accommodate any dietary preference, and we'll talk about how uh, we can work with people that are consuming alcohol and we'd like to continue to consume alcohol. And then I'll go into some of the statistics as well as some of the studies uh, that are not as commonly reported as common media outlets generally only report the potential benefits of alcohol consumption and not the potential harms. So, PhD can work with people that choose to continue to use alcohol or want to continue to use alcohol. We can work with any dietary preference and alcohol is no exception to that. Um, we are all at a different metabolic place when we walk through the door, and that's why people need an individualized program for their unique position. We are also all, from a genetic standpoint, um, different. We all have different polymorphisms that will make us more able to tolerate alcohol consumption or less, and it's important to work with a team to help understand that. But when, it, when you look at the statistics on alcohol, it seems like potentially everybody drinks alcohol and if everybody's doing it it must be okay and the statistics support that actually it looks like if the nih will report that 90 percent of the american population has consumed an alcoholic beverage in their life but 50 percent consumes that on a regular basis which is still a very large number but if you look at a crowd you'll likely find that there are people that aren't drinking and it should be about half of the population across the board however with a two billion dollar advertising budget in the United States and $220 billion in sales, the alcohol beverage industry would like for you to think that everybody is consuming alcohol. So when you look at alcohol from a metabolic standpoint, it's a really interesting molecule. So ethanol, when it's consumed, diverts your metabolism away from whatever you want it to be doing. So if it's weight loss, weight maintenance, exercise, performance, whatever, once you consume alcohol, your body will focus on that. Ethanol is viewed by your body as a poison, and the breakdown product initially is also viewed as a poison, and your body will continue to burn that and put away everything else until it's done, and actually potentially for hours or days after it's done, depending on how much you consume. So that's a really important point. Um, when you look at the association studies of alcohol and weight gain, it's a mixed picture. And if, you, if the studies don't break down people by weight or BMI, um, it looks like alcohol is not associated with weight gain, which I find really interesting until you start to break down those numbers and you find that people that are struggling with weight in the first place are actually more likely to gain weight with alcohol consumption. So people that, are, that have a higher BMI um, are more likely to gain weight with alcohol consumption and people that continue to increase their alcohol consumption over time are more likely to gain weight as well. So I mentioned that all other forms of metabolism are put aside. And that's true for both fat metabolism, not only dietary fat that you're consuming, but fat that you're trying to burn, uh, but also carbohydrate metabolism. Again, carbohydrates that you're consuming, but also carbohydrates that you're trying to burn in the form of glycogen or glucose. And there's some interesting things that happen as a result of that. So first of all, it can slow down fat loss. If you're not able to burn fat, it's gonna be difficult to lose weight through fat loss. But then also the glucose side of it is you can see blood sugar drops so you can actually get hunger as as a result of this if you're diabetic you can get blood sugar lows which can be dangerous um, so there's some real very important concepts there um, the hunger side gets even more complex when you start looking at the different ways that hunger is regulated by the body and people that struggle with weight and obesity um, have an already altered hunger axis and alcohol can, can actually continue to make that worse. To further on the fat metabolism side, if you're not burning fat, especially if you continue to consume fat, your body has to put it somewhere and what it does is it actually packages it up and it sticks it in the bloodstream. So you actually see more fat in the bloodstream as a triglyceride and that can increase your heart disease risk or cardiovascular disease risk. And so that's important because people that are, again, struggling with obesity, metabolic syndrome, they're already at increased risk and consuming alcohol is gonna only increase that risk more. 
from a gut health standpoint, uh, it's interesting to see that when you consume alcohol, people are familiar that it can cause ulcers, it can make your stomach upset or gastritis, um, but it actually can change the structure of your gut and it certainly will have a strong effect on the lining of your gut. It'll have an effect on the bacterial um, microbiome of your gut and it can change that microbiome even with light drinking. Um, it can change the permeability of the gut, which can lead to uh, a lot of different medical problems, but ultimately it just exposes your body to, to more toxins and more antigens, which your immune system then has to work on. Um, and it also will weaken the immune system of the gut itself. Um, and lastly, alcohol has a tremendous impact on sleep. Uh, sleep is critically important for stress management. It is strongly associated with weight gain and difficulty with weight loss. And if you consume alcohol, particularly on a regular basis, it can affect both sleep quality and quantity. Uh, and there's a tremendous impact there. Um, so to wrap it up, alcohol is part of a lot of people's social experience, and that is okay. Um, it's important though to understand what it's doing and that it is not neutral. Um, and that we just need to understand where you are, what your goals are, and how alcohol can be worked into that. Um, that's all I've got. I hope you find that helpful. Um, this is Dr. Doug Lucas supporting your performance, health, and diet PhD.